okay. <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> okay, I think we are cleaned up now. All right, I think we're good. <laughs> In today's video, we are going to be cooking up three edible last minute Christmas gifts that you can give friends, family, or anyone that you don't really know who to get a gift for. On today's agenda, we got beef jerky, cornbread, as well as Christmas tree bark or Christmas bark. Basically, it's just chocolate broken up and it is called bark, but they are all crowd pleasers. Everybody loves these gifts. And there is just nothing like a homemade edible Christmas gift. They're just so delicious. So last night, Joe and I started on the beef jerky because that is the longest amount of time due to the dehydrating process. So editing Courtney, play back the clips. We haven't had one friend who has disliked receiving beef jerky from us. And the greatest thing is you could also do this to tofu and it is still banging. Oh no, what are we gonna do? The marinade that we use is actually Joe's secret formula, but you could use whatever marinade you'd like, whatever you use for steak. I am sure that it will come out just fine. Good morning. But it is 9.19, so we're gonna want to start the beef jerky. My three biggest tips would be, one, this is way easier with two people, one person to cut the beef and another person to make the sauce or the marinade. Two, cutting along the grain of the meat or against it will change the texture of the jerky. And three, no matter what type of marinade you use, you don't want to marinate for over 24 hours since it will take away from the jerky texture. And actually, Joe and I think it's a little gross if it's over 24 hours. So I feel overnight is the best policy. And for the most part, beef jerky is really easy once it's all prepped up. You just have to take the time to put it on the dehydrator and then take it off and re-put it on. And now we are going to move on to the cornbread. To the cooking station! Oh! Ha! Alright. All recipes that I will be using will be linked down below. That being said, the oven has been already preheated to 400 degrees. And personally for the cornbread, I like to double up the recipe. And that's because the cornbread uses milk, which Joe and I don't really drink. So if I have to buy milk, I like to find ways and make sure that all of the milk is used before it goes bad. All right, we got the cornmeal. Ah. Ooh, let's get a Dublé camera action going. Give me a second, guys. Also, it's because the recipe is so easy. It's almost like, why not? If you're gonna spend the effort to make something, you might as well just make two of them. That just saves you a lot of time while you're cooking. That is a butt ton of ingredients. Look how much that is. Just whisk it up. Whoa. Now it's time for the magic. I think the recipe says either use oil or butter. My recommendation is you use butter. Butter is also a thing that Joe and I don't really eat, so it just doesn't go to waste. Does anyone really drink milk anymore anyways? Two eggies. One, a two. Bada bing, bada boom. All right. And now we combine. Ooh, gross. Thumbnail time. This is definitely not a step you want to skip. I've skipped it before and I don't recommend it. You're going to want to lightly grease your pan and I just do it with olive oil just because there's already a lot of butter and it ensures that when you cut, everyone gets a really, really pretty, pretty, pretty piece of cornbread. So, all right, let's do that. And then we're just gonna dump that dish in. Bam, 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 bam. I think this is the first time that I have made cornbread in this pan. And it turns out that double is the perfect amount. Make sure you get it all. There is raw egg in here, but if you lick the bowl, I won't tell anybody. And I can see that it's a little lumpy, so it's not gonna be as pretty. So I'm just gonna take a back of a plastic spoon, no holes and give it a good smooth. 
smooth, smooth down, smooth, smooth, smooth. And maybe I'll do like a little like flop, a little flop. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Timer is on, so cornbread is in for about 22 minutes. And now it is time to reset the kitchen a little bit so we can move on to the Christmas tree bark. Right, so I have my chilled peanut butter cups, so that way they're a little bit easier to smash. And I also have my pretzels. I don't have a particular method for this, so I guess I might as well. That worked. I have a pan of parchment paper already set out. And then I have my rinky dink double boiler thing that is actually not a double boiler, but it just happens to be able to work that way out of all of the pots and pans that I have and how they fit in together, you know what I'm saying? All I'm trying to say is it's not a real double boiler, I get it. But I'm not buying one because this works just fine and that's the story that I'm sticking to. So these are the chocolates that I will be sticking into the double boiler. And these are the ones that I'm just gonna stick in the microwave in a random Tupperware that I don't care about. And we're just gonna open this up and dump this in the pot. Next up, we are going to dump these into this Tupperware. I'm just gonna have two. That should have so good. Oh, that's a lot. Oh, I don't know if I have to reconsider this. Um, I'm not going to. So at the moment I am waiting for the chocolate to heat up and then I'm gonna start stirring it so that way it is liquidy. And then once that gets liquidy, I will put the peanut butter in the microwave. That way they'll be ready at approximately around the same time. We have the parchment paper. We are just gonna pour the chocolate before it sets. We don't want that to happen. It's good. Oh my God, the, oh my gosh, this is too much. We'll do that. All right, guys. Emergency, emergency. Boom. Again with the smoothness. We want smoothness. <gasps> okay, it's fine. This doesn't have to be perfect. You just don't want it so thick. So let's move that over here. Next, we have the peanut butter, but you can see that it's still so thick. So you can add some shortening. This is just some old fashioned Crisco. If you need shortening, do not go crazy with it, okay? Just add a little bit at a time. So let's try this out. Yeah, buddy. So let's get some drizzle in there. Oh, come on, come on, more, more, more. Mm, 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 mm. All right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That was a good spoonful. You kind of want a Pollock Pollock painting. I don't know how you pronounce that guy's name because I'm uncultured, but that guy. And as soon as you think that you have a good amount, I like to take toothpicks like this, and let's just swirl it up even more. Like, oh ho, ho, yeah, buddy. You don't wanna to do too much, cause then you're gonna mud it up. It's not gonna look as swirly. Once you feel that you have the base exactly how you want, we can start putting on toppings. So I have the pretzels. And now we have peanut butter cups. Oh yeah, oh gosh, oh yeah. Mm, 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 mm. It is so pretty, I love it. So now you have two choices. You're either gonna let your bark set in room temperature or if the temperature was way too high, you're gonna wanna put it in the fridge. Just know that the chocolate bark itself will not be as stable and will continuously need to be refrigerated. But to speed up the process, because I'm a little lazy, I'm going to put it in the fridge for about 30 minutes and then I'm gonna take it out. But this is what it looks like going in the fridge. The last step that makes a homemade gift so special is decorating it and making it your own and making it special for your friends so that they think this is such a beautiful gift. So I like to buy Ziploc bags that have Christmas patterns on them, little Christmas tins, as well as write a personalized note card for them in the boxes. 
Another reason why I love these recipes is once they are done, as in they're finished cooking and setting, you just have to cut them up and put them away. So the only thing that I didn't make very presentable was the cornbread because I'm bringing that to a party. So I just pre-cut it so that way we were able to eat it easily at the football game, which is where we were seeing our friends. You see what I'm saying? Uh, but you could wrap that up too if you really wanted to. And here I am just finishing up the boxes and this is how they turned out. I really, really love them and I hope my friends really like them. Anyways, thank you guys so very much for watching and I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday. Thank you for making this year so special. All right, I have to stop talking. You could watch some of my other videos if you'd like or subscribe or like this video or comment something. What did you make your friends? Okay, I gotta go. Bye.